So in this problem, what we have is this elevator, and we know it's going to be traveling up 40 meters. We know the mass is 1,500 kilograms, and we know it's going to have a bunch of forces acting on it. It's going to have the force due to gravity. It's going to have the force of friction. And it's also going to have a tension force from a cable that's going to be pulling it upwards. And so the main thing we're going to do in this problem is going to be solving for work. So in order to solve for work, you need to know its formula, which is work equals force times distance times the cosine of theta. So this is the formula we're going to use to solve for the work in each of the problems. So let's just go ahead and start with the first one. So the first one, what we're going to be solving for is the work done by the cable. So the work done by this tension force, essentially, because this is the force uh, done by the cable. So what we need to do is find what this tension force is. And the way we're going to do that is by taking the sum of the forces in the y direction. So we know it's going to be traveling at a constant speed. So that means the sum of the forces in the y, because we know force equals ma. So a is going to be 0 if it's constant. So sum of the forces in the y equals 0. And then we want to say 0, and we're just going to add up the forces in the y. So we have t, and it's going upwards, so it's positive. And then if it goes downwards, it's negative. So we have t minus mg, and then minus the force of friction. And so what this will tell you is that the tension force is just going to be equal to the force due to gravity, which is mg, plus the force of friction. And this makes sense. So basically, the force for the first part of A, since we're doing the force in the cable, and we know it equals this, what we do is just plug in mg plus the force of friction. So the work is going to be equal to uh, mg. So the mass is 1,500 times g. And so I'm just going to use 9.8. That's the acceleration due to gravity plus the force of friction. So they tell us it's going to be uh, 100. So it's going to be equal to 100 because it's constant. So let me write that down. The force of friction is 100 newtons. So what you can do is just go ahead and this, uh, add this up. And then keep in mind what the cosine of theta is. So this is the force, right? This is the force times the distance. The distance is 40 meters because that's how far we move it up. So times 40. And then we multiply by the cosine of theta. So what the cosine of theta is, is basically the angle between the direction it travels in and the force. So we know it's going upwards, and we also know the tension in the cable is going upwards. So basically, they're right on top of each other. They're both going this way. And if something's on top of itself, or just of something else, the angle between the two of them is just 0. So we multiply by the cosine of 0, and the cosine of 0 is just 1. So really, we can just ignore it. So the work in this case is just going to be equal to 1,500 times 9.8 plus 100 and then you multiply that by 40 and so when you go ahead and do that what you're going to get it equals 5 9 2 0 0 0 and so we measure work in joules so joules and then it's 1 2 3 4 5 so you can say 5.92 times 10 to the 5 joules so this is going to be your answer to a so it's essentially the work done by the cable. So that's A. Let's move on to B now. So B is going to be uh, the work done by the gravitational force. So we know the gravitational force is just going to be mg. So instead of having to solve for f, we know what f is right away. It's just mg. So the work is going to be equal to mg times the distance it travels. In this case, it's going to be 40. So we'll just write distance times the cosine of theta. So let's just plug in the values now. So the mass is 1,500. g is still 9.8. The distance is 40, and then this is where the problem uh, differs a bit. So cosine of theta, keep in mind the force is going down, but it's traveling upwards. And what that means, if you look at it like this, it goes straight up while the force goes down. And what theta is, is the angle between these two lines. And if they're going in opposite directions, but they're right on top of each other, the angle is going to be this. And you should know that this angle is just 180 degrees. So what that means is it's, it's the cosine of 180. So cosine of 180, and what the cosine of 180 is, is minus 1. So this is just going to be minus 1, and so our work is actually going to be negative. So what you want to do is multiply this out, 1,500 times 9.8 times 40, and then you're multiplying by minus 1, so it's actually negative. So work is going to be equal to minus 588000. So it's going to be equal to 5, or minus, sorry, minus 5.88 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 10 to the 5, and then it's joules again. So this is going to be the work as or the work done by the gravitational force. So this is your answer to B. Now let's move on to C. So for C, we're trying to find the total work done by the lift. So the way we're going to find the total work is we know work equals force times distance 
times the cosine th of theta. And so what we're going to do is just take, uh, when they say force of the whole thing, basically what we're going to do is just take, or add up all the forces in the y direction. And what you should notice is it's just going to come to zero. Because we know the sum of the forces in the y equals zero, so the force in this case is really zero because these ba uh, balance out. So the work is going to be equal to zero times the distance. And so what you should realize is none of this actually matters because we're multiplying by zero. So the work done, or the total work done, is just going to be equal to zero because the sum of the forces add up to zero. So the work in this case is going to be zero joules for your C. So your answer to C is going to be zero joules. And then, yeah, so this was A, this was B, this was C. And so these are your answers, and hopefully you found this useful.